out a week ago. Now, isn't it wonderful how there are so many ways to get in touch with us now? We got the Twitter, we got the Instagram, and we got the Facebook. The wonderful thing about social media is that it can make complete strangers feel like close friends, a community of people who are there to help you and, in some cases, help themselves to your money. When I started on this programme, roughly the same time that Justin Bieber was conceived, telephone directories were incredibly useful. They were a big thing. Oh. It was considered a physical feat to be able to rip one in half. How times have changed. Now, telephone directories have been on a calorie-controlled diet. Slimline. You see, traders don't have to spend money advertising in one of these anymore. Nowadays, you've got social media, no advertising fees, and no need to wait for your customers to come to you. Q, Richard G. Goldthorpe. He'll lie in wait on your community Facebook site, responding to your plumbing or gas fitting cry for help as though it's a bat signal. But he's no caped crusader. He is a road trader. Jo Davis from Cumbria hired Rick after posting on her community Facebook group for a plumber to remodel her bathroom. Hello, Jo. I'm Matt and I'm here to see your bathroom. The remains of my bathroom. <laughs> Come on. Thank you. Rick was quick to reply and he seemed like the ideal man for the job. Uh, he was a friendly guy. He came in wearing his gas-safe hoodie. Immediately, I thought, that, yeah, this is a, a bona fide plumber. But after taking £1,000 for materials, he ripped out the old bathroom and then ripped off Joe. It's not quite there, is it, Joe? No. Just 90 minutes into the job, Rick vanished with Joe's money and her house keys. I got back here at about 3 o'clock. Uh, there was rubble all here, there was the bath outside, tiles outside, the shower was outside the front door. Yeah, that was the last time I saw him. He came for one morning, he's got your money, he's got your house key, destroyed your bathroom, and that is the last you've seen of this guy. Yeah. If someone was walking on the streets and they mugged you for a grand, that would be a huge deal. But for him to come into my house and almost mug me for a grand, <laughs> no violence, obviously, but... You know, that's what it feels like. So, that's the way Rick rolls. He takes the money, but when it comes to doing the job properly, it's not tonight Josephine. Over the last ten months, Rick has left a trail of shoddy and unfinished work from Buckinghamshire to Bradford. This is a leaky toilet after he's fixed it. And when his customers dare to complain, well, he gets quite creative. Although I do believe predictive text may have played a part in some of these. You knew it was 80 because you were paying the rest upon completion. Now, duck off, mother... Exclamation, 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 hash, asterisk, hash. Lien, you idiot, a service is £60, you gave me 100 Tell you what, oil call tonight. And there we go. Apropos of nothing. Does anybody remember the 2007 Rick Rolling phenomenon? Rick Rolling, yeah? It's a big thing. Well, it went like this. You send somebody an email with a link in it that they think might be interesting or entertaining. They click on it, and what they find is a video of Rick Astley singing Never Gonna Give You Up. Rick Rolling. Massive. OK, well, tuck that one away for later. Because now it's time to meet Rick for ourselves. We post a message on Facehook, as I now like to call it, asking for a plumber to fix a leak. And in no time at all, Rick takes the bait. All we need now is a house rigged with hidden cameras, a customer played by team member Anna, there she is, and a fault created by expert Mike Griffin, a plumber and gas fitter whose reputation is like an old radiator in that it's cast iron. What have you done, Mick? We've loosened one of the nuts. I've put something in to stop it sealing up correctly. And there's a teeny weeny little weep on it. This is a very simple job. It's a very simple fault. Even a first-year trainee should be able to deal with this. 
Well, Rick has told customers he's got 11 years of plumbing experience, so this should be a breeze for him. To fix it, all Rick needs to do is tighten up the nut and replace the cracked cylinder jacket. Total cost, around 145 quid, as represented by this graphic. Hey, Mike, do you remember the Rick rolling thing from about 10 years ago? Not really. Is that strictly relevant? It is, if enough people remember before the end of the programme. First, though, Rick's here, along with the sidekick, who will call Mick for no better reason than that's his name. Hiya. Hello. They head straight to the hot water cylinder, and after just 20 seconds of careful analysis, Rick tells us he knows precisely what's causing the leak. You see, the top's gone. Right. Copper rots from the inside out. So where that's rotted at the top here, when I try and tighten that nut, I can't put my grips on anything there. So the full metal's going to try and turn. Are you with me? Uh, no, Rick, we're not with you. We're starting to see, however, how Rick rolls just second in, seconds into the job and he's in our airing cupboard already laundering the truth. Find out in a few minutes if we get rinsed. Uh, meanwhile, back to road traders. Rick Goldthorpe doesn't place adverts. He's harnessed the power of anti-social media to facehook his customers, meaning they don't know where he's from or, more importantly, where their money has gone when he does his alakapoof disappearing act with it. Well, we facehooked him right back, inviting him around to a house to mend a leaky hot water cylinder. Simple fix. All he needs to do is tighten up a loose nut. But Rick has other ideas. <laughs> Expert Mike Griffin is keeping an eye on Rick as he tries to convince us that our hot water cylinder is beyond repair, despite the fact we know it can be repaired for just £145. We can try and fix it, but the morning you it might rip it. Or the other one is, if it doesn't tear and then we go away, it's probably going to start leaking again in a, in a couple of weeks. Do you know what I mean? Shaky-headed Mike knows that our hot water cylinder is structurally sound. The nut just needs tightening, the insulating jacket replacing. But what we really need at this stage is a plumber's point of view. From a plumber's point of view, I put a new cylinder in it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't even mess with it. Yeah, I meant a proper plumber. Doesn't need a new cylinder. It's working fine. That's what I'm saying to you. We can fix that, but it won't be a permanent. Once they're gone, they're gone. Do you know what I mean? So with a repair on that joint particularly, there's no reason it will last another 15 or 20 years. Uh, thank you, Mike. We can repair it for you, though. That's what I'm saying to you. I wouldn't want to take your money and then you're ringing us up saying it's leaking again. But they do want to take Anna's money for a completely unnecessary new hot water cylinder. Yep, Rick is on a roll. Remember, that may be important later. Maybe. Anyway, at least we're promised an upgrade. So will it be like the same sort of? Yeah, exactly same. the same. Exactly the same. What's stainless? What's stainless? Well, all right, it's yeah. Stainless steel, you say? For our Swiss steel cylinder, we're quoted around seven hundred pounds, and off they go to buy the parts. See you in a minute. Bye. Less than an hour later, they're back with our brand new and improved hot water cylinder. It's made out of <laughs> copper. Not stainless steel, as promised. And it's straight to work. Now this... is a belt. It's crucial equipment. OK, the show is over. But Rick's performance is actually just getting going. It's soon clear he's got his eyes on a far bigger prize than just our hot water cylinder. You want a conversion doing? I could have a combi boiler there. We could do that. We could fit you one for about. It's normally eighteen hundred. Yeah. But because of the tank and stuff like that, if you rung us up and said I want a conversion doing, yeah. we'd do that for fourteen hundred quid. Let me explain to you how this works. 80s Rick Astley. You have to be gas safe registered to work on gas installations. It's the law. 
darn straight, Rick. But the other Rick, Rick Goldthorpe, treats the law like his own personal punch bag. Or child's plaything. Correct. In 2014, he was issued with a prohibition notice by the HSE for working on gas installations when he wasn't gas safe registered. It's the law. Which I think we've established. Gas fitting and gas safe registration. Inseparable. Together forever. If Rick is caught again doing gas work without being gas safe, he could be prosecuted by the health and safety executive. Now, surely he wouldn't want to do that, would he? And who would do that then? Me and Mick. You two would come and do that? Yeah, and we'd, it'd be done in a day, that day's work. Oh, OK. So you're gas safe? Gas safe, yeah. Oh, you're gas safe. You have to be do this. You see? What did I say? You have to be. And he's not. No, he's not. But that hasn't stopped him getting a company shirt with the Gas Safe logo printed on it. Or stopped him continuing to do gas work. What else do you do? Toilets and stuff? Plumbing, gas, central heating, bathrooms, anything like um, anything to do with pipes and water and gas. More boilers than anything. A little like, um, say someone's boiler's broke down or something. Yeah. Like putting parts on it, you get a lot of that. Mm. That's probably the most common. Uh, when do we get that? It's all rather worrying. Gas work is a serious business, and getting it wrong can be dangerous, very dangerous. So what do I... We politely decline his offer to replace the boiler, and we settle up. Okay. Um, it comes to seven six five. Let's call it seven sixty. <laughs> So how much was the actual tank then? What did I pay for the tank? Do you remember? Five sixty for the tank. Five sixty, yeah. and all the bits. Yeah. And so and, so and we included... fitted it for two hundred quid. Okay. You've had a good, uh, a good deal there. Look online how much have we finished? So twenty. Well, we did look online, Rick, and we've not got a good deal at all. In fact, we found the very same hot water cylinder at the very same shop for £164.69. Nearly a £400 markup for something we didn't even need. And as for the quality of the work, remember this. I wouldn't want to take your money and then, and then you're ringing us up saying, it's leaking again. Mike has got something to say about that. Yeah, there's still a bit of a drip on that. He's still left us with a leak. So we're no better off than we were in the first place. On top of that, it's cost us 760 quid. Yep, the pilot light is about to go out for Rick Goldthorpe. He's just one man, but the damage he's doing through his particular brand of anti-social media cannot continue. Or there's a fair chance someone's going to get hurt. He's coming out for one more job at our house. But if he removes the cover of our boiler, we'll remind him. That's not Rick's role. Next, it's the long-awaited return of our swab mob. Isn't it, Nicky? Uh, now, Nicky, for the final part of tonight's Rogue Traders, Rick Goldthorpe has been on a roll ripping off customers all over the country and worryingly pretending he's gas safe, which he's not. It's against the law. So, remember earlier when I said the Rick rolling phenomenon may be important later? It's time. Plumber Rick Goldthorpe's been letting people down. He's been running around and deserting them, as well as telling lies and hurting them. So, we've set up a little surprise to give him a taste of his own medicine. If you've ever received a Rick Roll, then you'll know. The effect is to lead you down the garden path to expect one thing and then receive another. Which, if you think about it, is exactly what Rick Goldthorpe has been doing to his customers. And that's why it's an appropriate way to get our message through to him. It's time to give it up. We've invited Rick back to the same house as before. We are Rick ready. He thinks he's coming back to service our boiler. But in fact, we can't allow that to happen because he's not gas safe registered. Mike is here to check. When he takes the wing nuts off of the boiler, he has broken the law. And as soon as that happens, the Rick roll is on. Just time to reset the projector before Rick arrives. You're on your own side. And he heads straight to the boiler. Right. Oh, it's been off. <laughs> as soon as he takes that next cover off, you have to be gas safe registered to do that. 
Case I'm doing the wing nuts now. He's definitely breaking the law now. Stop. Hey Rick, how you doing? Matt, all right. all right. BBC Rogue Traders, good to see you. I'm all right. OK, so you know by taking that off, yeah. you need to be gas safe registered. Yeah, yeah. You're not gas I'm safe not, I'm registered. Not it off, I'm yeah, by doing that, you've broken the law. You know that, don't you? No. So my question is, when are you going to give this up? Yeah? I'm, 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 I'm when not... are you going to give this up? Do you give what? Why do you keep letting people down? When are you going to stop running dogs. around? I'm you not do. Like Rick, you know that you're not gas safe registered. We know that you're not gas safe registered. You shouldn't be doing this work. We know that you've done it for people since your gas safe registration expired. Yeah. You know that by doing that, also, you had a prohibition back in 2014. You're breaching that. Right. This is work that can affect people's lives. You have to be properly qualified. You also can't take. A thousand pounds from a woman in Cumbria and just run off with it. I'm you not, know that, I'm don't not, you? I'm not, I'm yeah, not. you do. Joe Davis, we know that you've done that. You took the money, you didn't go back. Yeah? You don't do have to put, like hey, that. we've got a proper, don't do anything else, because we've got a proper gas installer good, here, good. Rick, and he's going to sort that out. You All can right, just leave you. that now. Thank you. OK? So yeah. can you tell me, when is Joe going to get her £1,000 back? I don't know where you're on about. Yeah, Joe Davis, she's in Olverston in Cumbria. You yeah. wrecked her bathroom, you ran off with her money, you ran off with her front door key as well. No, I don't know. Uh, yeah, you did. You wrecked her bathroom. And, and you've done that, and you're not gas-safe registered, are you? Yeah. That's why you couldn't do that work. You shouldn't be doing it. It's against the law. It's against the law for you to do that. That's f this is for you, Rick. This is for you, so you have to get back in touch with us. All right, thank you. OK, now, Cheers. you're going to stop doing this, aren't you, yeah? Yeah, you're yeah. You're going to stop yeah, doing yeah. this? Yeah, You're yeah. going to stop gas work, because you're not gas-safe registered? Yeah. I've not done any you're gas gonna work. You're going to be... There goes Rick, rolling away. And uh, maybe, who knows, on his way to a, another boiler, another bathroom, when he shouldn't be working on them. Uh, don't let him bleed you like a radiator. OK. Hit it. Let's do the music. Still got it. Well, since then, we've had further conversations with Rick, but no explanation of his behaviour. He wanted to know if paying back Joe her money would stop us broadcasting our investigation. Sorry, Rick, we need to let other people know how you operate. Public service broadcasting and all that, it's how we roll. Remember, as soon as an engineer interrupts your supply, they must be gas safe registered. To be really sure, check their card and number on the gas safe website. <laughs>